Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. J. Allen Hynek. Hynek is most known for his research into UFOs and efforts to legitimize ufology as a genuine scientific discipline. Background. J. Allen Hynek earned his Ph.D. in astronomy from the University of Chicago before going on to work at Ohio State University. As a consultant with the U.S. Air Force's Project Sign in the late 1940s, he examined accounts of unusual aircraft sightings. After that, under the new moniker of Project Blue Book, he began undertaking more in-depth studies, and his findings fueled a mission to make the study of UFOs a respectable scientific practice. A few years later, Hynek established the Center for UFO Studies and wrote numerous books on the topic. Sighting classification was proposed by one of them, which inspired Steven Spielberg's film Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Early Years Ambrose Joseph Hynek was born on May 1 of the year in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois. Immigrants from Czechoslovakia, Joseph and Bertha were both teachers at the elementary school where they raised their children. It was while lying in bed recovering from scarlet fever at age 7 that Hynek first became interested in the stars, his mother had ran out of children's books to read so she went to textbooks, and a high school astronomy edition caught his eye. When he was in high school, Hynek became the editor of his school newspaper. At this point, his interests had expanded to include the Rosicrucian secret societies and Rudolf Steiner, the hermetic philosopher. Education in 1931, Hynek graduated from the University of Chicago with a Bachelor of Science in Astronomy, and he stayed on to acquire a Ph.D. in the field. Because of the observatory's focus on cosmic phenomena, his Ph.D. studies carried him to Wisconsin's Lake Geneva and to the emergence of Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany. When the dazzling Nova Herculis appeared in the night sky at the end of 1934, Hynek was tapped to collect readings of the supernova at Ohio's Perkins Observatory, a university-affiliated observatory. In 1936, he joined the faculty of Ohio State University's Department of Physics and Astronomy, Project Blue Book and Project Sign. In 1948 astronomer Hynek, then director of Ohio State University's Macmillan Observatory, agreed to help the U.S. Air Force investigate reports of unexplained aircraft sightings, including one that described the lightning-fast flying saucers above the Cascade Mountains in Washington. Dr. Hynek, as an astronomical consultant on Project Sign, was responsible for sorting through the reports and determining which ones could be explained by meteorology, like a cloud with a strange shape, astronomical observations, like the appearance of a meteor, or human-made objects, like balloons. However, Hynek was confident that answers would eventually come to light and return to Ohio State. The Air Force relaunched the program as Project Blue Book in 1952, following a steady stream of new reports. Also back in the fold. Hynek has been granted permission to examine the claimed sightings of extraterrestrials. It wasn't until witnesses reasonable accounts of unidentified flying objects or UFOs questioned his initial skepticism that he began to consider about the legitimate scientific investigation of these UFOs. As a professor at Northwestern University in the 1960s, Hynek was at war with the Air Force's oppressive control over his research. Northwestern University professor Hynek began meeting with other academic members to discuss new cases like the purported appearance of aliens by New Mexico police officer Lonnie Zamora in 1964. The Condon Committee and Swamp Gas When a series of strange lights were reported in Michigan in March 1966, Hynek was ordered to investigate. It wasn't long before the scientist announced that swamp gas may have been responsible for the unexplained occurrences. It became a national joke. But Michigan Congressman Gerald Ford wasn't laughing and demanded the Armed Services Committee investigate what he thought was an incompetent probe. Hynek made his first public break from the Air Force when he was called to speak and seized the opportunity to push for a comprehensive, open investigation into UFOs. After Edward Condon, the university's director and physicist, formed the Condon Committee later that year, Hynek was happy that UFO research had finally reached a national level of prominence. He was, however, dismayed when the committee, after spending two years researching the matter, ruled that no further resources should be spent on it. After Project Blue Book was officially shut down in 1969, it was no more. Center for UFO Studies He was no longer bound by his Air Force duties and established the Center for UFO Studies in 1973 to further establish ufology as a legitimate field of study. Some of Kufo's early successes were directing investigations into claimed sightings and building partnerships with law enforcement. In 1978, Hynek resigned from Northwestern to devote himself full-time to Kufos. Fundraising efforts had failed by the early 1980s, and Hynek was forced to operate from his Evanston, Illinois, home. An unnamed possible donor in Arizona enticed him there in 1984, 
but the promise of an Operation Revival failed to materialize. Hynek's papers remain at Kufos, which is administered by a dedicated board of followers who continue to assist studies into UFOs and other strange events. A scientific inquiry into the UFO experience and close encounters. The UFO experience, a scientific inquiry was published by Hynek in 1972 in order to provide a clear explanation of his research. The close encounter label was first introduced in this book. Unidentified aircraft are seen in the first close encounter of the first kind. The second kind involves associated physical consequences, such as equipment malfunctions, and third kind includes seeing live forms on or near an unidentified aircraft. Later in the decade, Steven Spielberg's sci-fi epic Close Encounters of the Third Kind popularized the term. When the movie was being created, Hynek was on hand to provide advice and even made an appearance in the film. Books and Other Appearances In the 1970s, Hynek was a well-known face in the field of ufology because of his appearances on shows like The Dick Cavett Show and In. On the college circuit, he was a well-known and well-paid speaker. In 1978, he addressed the United Nations on the topic of UFOs. The Edge of Reality, A Progress Report on Unidentified Flying Objects, 1975, co-authored by Hynek and Jacques Vallée, continued his written analysis of the issue. The following year, he published the Hynek UFO Report. What the Government Suppressed and Why, an account of his involvement with Project Blue Book. Other Contribution. Fused by Proximity. Hynek worked at the Johns Hopkins Applied Science Laboratory during World War II, when he contributed to the development of military technologies. For him, it was all about the proximity fuse, a radio-based detonator that could tell when an explosive device had approached its intended target. Through his job here, Hynek gained access to UFO investigations and other government initiatives. Sputnik and Moon Watch. As part of the project to put a man-made satellite into orbit, Harvard's Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory hired Hynek in 1956. As part of Operation Moon Watch, Hynek established a network of tracking stations around the world equipped with sophisticated optical devices. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first satellite, sending the preparations into disarray. Hynek was thrust into the limelight for the first time when he was asked to explain what was going on and why the United States was safe. Prior to resuming his teaching job in 1960, Hynek resumed his research and development of a technique for catching light from faint galaxies, which became the cornerstone of image orthicon astronomy. The Stargazer Project Once again, Hynek collaborated with Air Force officials on Project Stargazer, a high-altitude balloon-equipped telescope launching project that was launched in late 1957. Despite Hynek's best efforts, the Air Force abandoned the project in 1963 after a series of mishaps and failures. Families and Marriage Miriam Curtis, an undergraduate student, was Hynek's second wife after his first marriage ended in 1939. Scott, Joel, Paul, Ross, and Roxanne were the names of their five children. Death In 1986, at the age of 75, Hynek died of a brain tumor in Scottsdale, Arizona's Memorial Hospital. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.